At virtually every conference, the obligatory question arises of where we are in the cycle. The two primary schools of thought appear to be that we are either in a continuation of an extended economic cycle or that this has turned into a new game over the past couple of years. While there are some concerns going forward, investors still view the hotel sector as a good play. Since Claire's acquisition of Fairmont Raffles in mid-2016, the hotel industry has been on a streak of consolidation. In less than 21 months, we have witnessed well over $20 billion in corporate acquisitions, including management companies, REITs, and most notably brands. And rumors abound as analysts and industry insiders expect this trend to continue for the foreseeable future. Back in 1980, there were only 90 hotel brands in the U.S. A mere 12 brands at that time were part of larger brand umbrellas. Today, there are 259 hotel brands in the United States, and almost two-thirds of them are now part of large brand companies. As a result, we are seeing an invasion of mega brand families. Today, nine companies house almost half of the hotel brands in the United States. In addition to growth through consolidation, we see the creation of new brands, many of which are positioned in the mid-market lifestyle segment. With so many of these millennial-focused brands battling for shelf space, many are building significant pipelines. True is currently leading the way with over 280 properties in various stages of planning. Meanwhile, Indigo, Cambria, Moxie, Aloft, and AC are nearly tied for second with 80 to 90 properties in their till. Many other fledgling brands are still looking to gain momentum. Stimulated by strong supply and demand dynamics, hotel development continues to climb, with more than $30 billion spent on hotel construction in 2017. This is still below the volume of construction dollars spent on lodging back in 2007 and 2008. Moreover, supply growth is only now returning to the long-term average of 1.8% annually, perhaps illustrating a more disciplined approach to building hotels during this cycle. With the industry continually reaching new performance records, some fear that it is only a matter of time before something hits us and weakens demand. However, there is reason to believe that hotel demand will continue to grow. In comparing the growth in key metrics for both the domestic lodging and airline industries in 2017, airlines outpaced lodging in supply growth, demand growth, and revenue growth. With air travel being a major driver of hotel demand, one would assume that unsatisfied demand exists in many markets. Valuation metrics for institutional quality hotel investments are slowly changing with the market. While the Fed is raising rates, hotel interest rates have been slowly climbing too, but remain near historic lows. Higher leverage has been one way to compensate for the higher cost of debt. The average loan-to-value ratio is at its highest level over the past seven years, at just over 69%. And cap rates on historic net operating income have been increasing as repositioning and turnaround opportunities are more limited. The resulting impact has been a slow yet steady transactions market. Median price per room declined in 2017, but that was more indicative of the types of assets being traded than a true indicator of declining values. It is also important to note that the average cost to build an institutional quality asset reached $265,000 per key in 2017. With development costs in excess of acquisition prices, supply growth is anticipated to plateau and perhaps even taper over the next few years. Questions remain as to where the economy will go from here and how long it will run. Looking at macroeconomic indicators and expectations from the Federal Reserve's survey of professional forecasters, we should anticipate continued growth. The pace of growth in gross domestic product rose in 2017 and is expected to rise at an even faster pace in 2018 and exhibits strong growth again in 2019. Unemployment dropped to 4.1% in 2017 and is forecast to slide further in 2018 and 2019. Consumer price index saw consistent growth in 2016 and 2017 and the next couple of years are expected to increase at a similar pace. Corporate profits experienced strong growth in 2017 after a slight decline in 2016, but 2018 is anticipated to be another banner year for corporate profits, partially driven by the corporate tax cut. This is all projected to lead to moderate increases to disposable income in 2018 and 2019, which will benefit consumer spending.
For the public hotel companies, system-wide rev par growth ranged from 2.5% to 4.7% in 2017. Guidance from these companies for 2018 shows a fairly anemic outlook, with most estimating only 1% to 3% increases in rev par. One of the key positives for top-line growth in the hotel industry is the improvement in group booking pace. Marriott, Hilton, Hyatt, along with several hotel REITs acknowledged increases in group bookings for 2018, with most in the 2% to 4% range. This bodes well for further demand growth. Nevertheless, with only inflationary growth anticipated for revenue, this leaves minimal room for error on the expense side. Although demand continues to grow and occupancies remain strong, companies need to avoid the pitfalls of rising costs. The best opportunities for improving flow through and increasing profitability will need to come from cost reductions that do not impact the operation. Direct booking initiatives along with recent moves to cut meeting planner commissions illustrate efforts to rein in expenses. The major hotel franchise companies continue to hype their rewards programs in efforts to encourage direct bookings through Brand.com. IHG and Marriott's combined plans are nearly equal with roughly 100 million members each. Hilton, Wyndham, Choice, Hyatt, and Best Western trail in size. Expedia and Hotels.com have also built programs of respectable size. It's also interesting to note how these compare to the membership levels for two of the most popular consumer loyalty programs there are, Amazon Prime and Costco. As much as the industry focuses on its direct booking strategy in hopes of limiting the use of online travel sites, the two major OTA umbrella companies, Booking Holdings and Expedia Group, continue to see significant growth in room nights booked. In 2017, these two behemoths accounted for almost a billion room nights booked worldwide, a 19% increase from 2016. On the expense side, employee compensation continues to increase. With payroll typically accounting for roughly one-third of a hotel's expenses, this weighs heavily on an operation. 31 states currently have minimum wage legislation that exceeds the federal minimum wage of $7.25 an hour. In 2018, 11 of those states will increase the minimum wage by 4% or more, with several other states likely to make upward adjustments as well. While concerns remain for the hotel industry as well as the greater economy, we have been able to evade most threats over the past few years. With most of the current metrics having a positive spin, the outlook remains optimistic for the foreseeable future. However, the hotel industry should maintain its proactive efforts in order to survive any unexpected threats or disruptors in its space.